Many Kenyans believe that the Pandora Papers, especially where they touch on the nation called Kenya, is actually a Pandora's box. So you know what a Pandora's box is? A box you dare not open because it is the source of many troubles or it will lead to many, many problems. So the general advice is Usiguze yo Pandora's box. Ata uzidhubutu kuifungua. He 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 But now it is open. He 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 he. Now it is important that you fully grasp what I'm driving at. Very important. Have you ever watched this movie? Where the star is very excited about opening a Pandora's box. Yeah, maybe they want to fix somebody. And a wise person advises them, Hiyo wachana nai, just leave it. But they ignore this advice, and they go ahead and open the box. And at the end of the movie, yeah, the battered, bruised star admits, that I wish I didn't open that box. I would have been better off. That is what I'm talking about. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Kenyans should keep their money stashed outside in secret accounts. No. What I'm saying is that it should be approached with extreme caution. And we must have a plan yeah, so that all that money comes back to Kenya yeah, and benefits Kenyans, circulates in the Kenyan economy. That's all I'm saying. Let me remind you of something here yeah, to emphasize what I'm trying to say. When President Kibaki took over from Daniel Toretich Arab Moy in 2002, late 2002, the first thing he did in 2003 was to commission yeah, a report from Kroll and Associates. The idea was to carry out an investigation, find out all the money stashed abroad by corrupt Kano politicians and seize it and bring it back into the country. That was the initial idea. Excellent idea. That was the right thing to do. But problems, <laughs> many problems stood in the way of Mwaikibaki. And by the time the report was released, there were already very many things happening in the background. Yeah, away from the public scrutiny. All aimed at blocking any efforts to have that money repatriated back into Kenya. Now, I covered this report extensively on my Kumekucha blog, including a super fascinating scene it gave us of President Daniel Toretich Arap Moy, sometimes in 2002, arriving in Switzerland. Yeah, you know those days there were no computers, things were not online. And the second president of Kenya arrived in Switzerland with his son Gideon Moy. And they rode around the town yeah, without security. Yeah. Just the two of them, yeah, with one or two handlers going from bank to bank, changing the signatories to those accounts from the senior Moy to the younger Moy. The report even revealed, shockingly, that somebody had registered an entity known as 
Republic of Kenya. <laughs> yeah. And the report named names. Yeah, it didn't leave out names. The long and short of the crawl report was how those close to Moy had registered shell companies, dummy corporations, yeah, the whole purpose being to hide funds stolen, robbed from the Kenyan taxpayer. That's really what it was. And Moy Kibaki was very determined yeah, to keep his campaign promise. And so State House took the issue to Parliament. Yeah, and the whole idea was to start with the arrest of former President Daniel Tori, teacher of Moy. But that motion was blocked. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never guess by who. It was blocked by patriot, legend, Raila Amolo Odinga. Oh, yes. It seems that I share the same views as Raila, yeah, in that one needs a plan to do these things, yeah, and it could damage the nation, break it into pieces, if you decide to do it by arresting people. But let me finish this Kibaki story. In the end, what happened was that the government gave amnesty, protection, to those Kenyans who are willing to return these funds into the country. Meaning that if you had funds stashed away in a foreign account, you could return those funds, put it in your account in Kenya, and nobody would ask you questions. Yeah, like what is the source of these funds, etc., etc. Where is this huge fortune coming from? Such questions. And as a result of that, it is estimated that slightly over, wait for this one, one trillion Kenya shillings landed back in the country. However, there was a catch. Hey, this money coming back into the country had zero impact on the economy. It was not felt. Zero or very little impact. What that meant, yeah, for those of us who do not understand these complex financing issues, was that the funds were not put into the economy. Yes, they arrived in the country, but where did they go? Were they promptly transferred elsewhere? Yeah, like for instance Namibia, yeah, where we know that a lot of the Moy fortune went. Well, your guess is as good as mine, and that remains a mystery to this day. Bottom line, ultimately didn't work. And that brings me back to what I was saying. You need a careful plan that can work. Because the whole aim, the whole objective, should not be just to punish people. Yeah, and then that money finds its way into some people's pockets. Maybe even those prosecuting yeah, the cases. No, the whole objective should be for this money to come back to the country. So that long-suffering Kenyans benefit that's my view, and you don't have to agree with me. And I know many of you are going to be upset at me, yeah, because of those views, which is okay. Maybe one day you'll understand when you're older and wiser. Now, these Pandora Papers. The whole thing was triggered when documents were leaked to the press. To be precise, to the International Consortium of investigative journalists, ICIJ. Now just picture for a moment, 12 million documents, I'm assuming computer files. Now if you give those files to one individual, it would take them the rest of their lives yeah, to go through them and they wouldn't even finish. Because remember, each document has to go through a process. Yeah, yes, you have the information, but then now you need to process that information. Yeah, this is a bank transfer from so-and-so to so-and-so. What does it mean? What were they transferring these funds for? What was the purpose? Etc., etc. And you move from document to document, file to file, doing this 
it's a lot of work. Indeed, the information that has now recently been released, actually released on Sunday, took two years to put together. And not by one individual, by over 600 journalists all over the world, representing over 150 media houses. Ooh. <laughs> in 117 different countries of the world. I believe this illustrates yeah, a very important fact. And that fact is, when somebody hides money, it is an uphill task. It is very difficult to be able to trace and find yeah, where they've hidden that money and how they've done it. It's very difficult. Indeed, that kind of forensic audit can only be undertaken by an expert here on these matters. And there are not many around the world. Because the rich and the famous, and even the criminals, pay some people a lot of money to do this job. And they don't pay them to do a Juakali job. Now, the prominent name in Kenya that has come out of the Pandora Papers is, of course, the Kenyatta family, which in turn opens yet another Pandora box, this time a Kenyan one, that would have to look into the presidency of Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, Kenya's very first president. And that can of worms would lead to another story, which is extremely sensitive. Yeah, and that is the acquisition of land by the first president of Kenya and those close to him. You see, at independence, one of the major issues yeah, was how the Brits were going to transfer back land grabbed from locals yeah, during their colonial reign. The way it was supposed to work was that this land was supposed to be purchased back yeah, with financial support from the Brits, yeah, and given back to its rightful owners, yeah, or their descendants. But this is Kenya, yeah, so you can guess it didn't work out quite like that. And an investigation into that issue will bring up many, many other names that you will never find in the Pandora Papers. Yeah, people like Mbiwi Konange, a yeah, close friend to the president, Minister of State for many years. People like Njoroge Mungai, Mr. Fixit, a nephew to President Jomo Kenyatta, etc., etc. Indeed, I firmly believe there are many supporters of this channel, many subscribers on this channel, who benefited directly or indirectly from those funds. Yeah which resulted in the suffering of many Kenyans. I think you're beginning to understand what I meant yeah, right at the beginning when I told you that this Pandora's box should be approached with caution and with a plan because it runs deep and it runs wide. But the debate that is definitely going to follow this issue is very healthy. It's good for the country. It will help many of us, including myself, understand a lot of things that we may not understand at the moment. But there's another debate that will go down that I can predict very early will not be healthy. And that is when the politicians start using this information for their benefit, for their personal selfish benefit. Because I know many of them, yeah, some of them will use this information and give Kenyans the impression that this is the full disclosure of the issue. And therefore those not mentioned in the Pandora Papers are clean. Safi kama pamba. Sunana, nikuwa nawambia. I'm not corrupt. Jinaangu eh? kuapia kwa Pandora Papers. Mi niko sawa. Vote for me. Of course they'll not tell you that their transactions were not captured in the leaked documents. Not everything leaked. Only some leaked. Yeah. A drop in the ocean, according to me. At best, 
less than a half. Yeah. And so it's just a matter of luck, not innocence. But I guess we have some wise guys out there, wise politicians, who will realize that the English say, people who live in a glass house cannot afford to throw stones. Now, another journalist, John Alan Namo, has done a video which is very thorough and explains in great detail yeah, the information relevant to Kenya from the Pandora Papers. And I've put a link at the top right hand corner at the tail end of this video. Yeah, click on it and go to that video and you will get all the information you need. It will be brought up to speed. These are very complex manenos. Yeah. You will need to take in that video, not with your usual popcorns, yeah, but with a cup of strong coffee and with your thinking cup on, yeah, so that you understand, so that you see through yeah, what he's explaining, which in my view, yeah, he has done an excellent job of explaining and simplifying. But in a nutshell, the way you hide your money is to register company A, and then have an entity which does not have your name to own that company. Yeah? And then you put layer and layer of protection over the whole thing. Yeah? It's like burying it on the ground. So that anybody who wants to follow a paper trail, hey, will even grow dizzy yeah, before they get anywhere near the real names behind these assets. Simplified. That's the way these things are done. So make sure you take it in if you want to understand this issue. There's something else very important. So far, nothing illegal for the whole issue concerning Kenya has been pointed to. Nobody has broken any law. That's very important. Now, it is true that our constitution prohibits state officers from owning and disclosed foreign accounts outside the country. But you'll need to correct me if I'm wrong. So far, I have not seen a single document proving that the president owns such an account outside this country. A bank account, I have not seen. I have taken time to go through this information. Bados Japata. And so what we're dealing with here is the spirit behind everything. At least so far, yeah, we have that situation where people need to explain a few things. But of course, the next few days and weeks <laughs> are going to be super interesting. Now, the president has already responded to this yeah, while in Ethiopia on a state visit, and he has said that this is very encouraging. This is good, yeah, that there should be full disclosure of such issues. And that he'll address the issue in greater detail when he lands back into the country from the Americas, where he has proceeded on a state visit. So let us wait and see what happens. Now kindly give me a minute to conclude this whole issue. We'll be back in a second. We have entered the season of exposure. I've talked about this before on this channel. Your regulars will know exactly what I'm talking about. A season of exposure is where hidden things, secrets, yeah, which would never have come out, come out. 
with consequences, of course. I believe in all cases when Almighty God triggers such a season of exposure, the whole idea is for the Almighty to do something. To do something to bring about change. And that is why I believe this expose contained in the Pandora Papers is just the beginning. This Pandora's box that has been opened will lead very far. That's what I believe. It will trigger events and actions that I believe with all my heart will ultimately bring the nation called Kenya to a better place. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.